There is nothing I love more than an amazing meal with high quality meat cooked at home because let's be honest, eating out is so expensive. And you also know that eating out is the number one budget buster. That is why I am so glad I found ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a premium meat subscription service dedicated to delivering high quality, grass fed, and grass finished beef, organic chicken, pork raised crate free, and wild caught seafood directly to your doorstep with free shipping always. You even get exclusive member deals, recipes, and a variety of high-quality cuts at an amazing price. New users will receive their choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for a year. Use code ETM and get $20 off your first box at butcherbox.com. Last night, we made a beef stew with meat from ButcherBox, and you can taste the difference. It was so satisfying and delicious. And all of our friends that were over for a dinner party, they raved at how good it was. So do yourself a favor and eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. ButcherBox is offering my listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential, three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips, for free in every order for a year. Plus, get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash etm and use code etm to choose your free offer and get $20 off. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, Right. For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. According to Dictionary.com, a mindset is the ideas and attitudes with which a person approaches a situation, especially when these are seen as being difficult to alter. To achieve success with your money, you must learn how to master your money mindset. It sounds hard to do, but in reality, it's simply about you just deciding on a different approach to how you deal with your cash. Welcome to Everyone's Talking Money Podcast. I'm your host, Shauna Game. There's no judgment, no dumb questions, just smart conversations about you and your money. So come on in and grab a seat. Everyone is welcome here. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's business cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor. And Ramp's software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 3.5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash today. Ramp.com slash today. R-A-M-P dot com slash today. Currents issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply. Ah, we did it. We are rounding out our month-long series on money mindset, money wellness, and by now I hope you have some great tools in your tool belt that you can use to flip the switch on any of your negative thoughts around money. And we have heard from so many amazing people this month from Ken Honda and his Happy Money Approach, which by the way, if you do not own his book, Happy Money, you absolutely need to grab it. To Trey Baj and her smart shopping tips, to Lisa Lynn Hall's story of literally creating movement around the invention of a sports bra and how that changed her life both personally and of course financially. And I just know that I have been really inspired this month. It has lit a fire under me for the podcast and kind of given me this new 
breath of fresh air. So I'm hoping that you felt that and I'm hoping that a lot of the tips that have been shared over this month, you can really utilize in your own mindset around money and your own thinking around money and really carry those through the rest of the year. So I thought it might be fun to just wrap up the month doing a little mashup of some of the most impactful ideas over the month to really remind you that mastering your mindset is totally within your reach. And the benefits of doing it are going to be felt in er every area of your life from your relationships to your career to your relationship with you. And of course, your money situation and mastering your mindset. It's, it doesn't mean that all of a sudden your money problems are going to go away. I'm not going to tell you that. That would be a very naive statement to make. But what I have found is that when I really spend time on my mindset, I'm able to see my money situation through a different lens and I'm able to remove any negative thoughts around money, any failure that maybe I'm hanging on to, all of that negative just juju and energy. I'm able to just send it away so I can look at the situation from a clear point of view and see things that I wasn't able to see before. I hope that makes sense. So first up in our mashup is Keisha Blair. Remember her story about holistic wealth? That that wealth isn't just about the stuff you have, but it's about all the different areas of your life. That's really what you're striving for because let's be honest, you can have millions and millions of dollars but not have good health or good relationships and things like that you just can't buy with money, at least not easily. So I want you to hear a little bit from Keisha's interview that I think is just really important that you should remember throughout the rest of this year. There's so much of your story that I obviously want to dive into and so much that I, I really resonate with myself. But I wanted to start out just laying a bit of foundation for this concept of holistic wealth. I'm really curious, like, what would you say is the main difference between holistic wealth and kind of like the old school definition of wealth? Yeah, no, great question. And in the book, I address it head on in the intro because I feel like that old school definition needs to be revamped. You know, like millennials yes. in particular are asking for a new definition that's not just defined by your net worth or how much money you have in your bank account, but your emotional and physical health. Um, you know, your spiritual health, and of course, um, you know, your, your, your financial health. So we're taking into those key aspects of our lives that are significant building blocks. Um, and, and one, they can't stand alone and we need them sure. to be in good health in order to have um, holistic wealth. So I think that's the key difference is that, you know, we, we, we just want to redefine wealth on our own terms. And, you know, with the rat race and everybody just, you know, being <laughs> exhausted and just tired, you know, like we're, 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 we're really looking for that new version, that revamped, refreshed, you know, meaning of wealth. Yeah, it, it's been a long time coming, right? That we need like a 2.0 version of, of wealth because I think, you know, people think about wealth and you so eloquently talk about this in the intro to your new book, Holistic Wealth. But, you know, we, we've defined wealth, like you say, in terms of just assets, like how much money is in my bank account? Do I own a house and a car and a boat and whatever the heck you want to put in there? Mm -hmm. But that thinking about it more like collectively, also incorporating experiences and, different things that you try. And I mean, gosh, you could just lump so many things into that. But when you when you look back at at wealth over your lifetime on your, you know, at the end of your life, you know, I think all of us are hoping for like that collection of of experiences, not just the number in our bank account. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And I'm curious, like, like, why do you think people have been so hesitant to really claim like holistic wealth is one of the most 
important, uh, you know, building blocks or pieces to a good life. It feels like we, we always like come up against this wall when we, when we talk about this concept. Yeah, no, you're right. I think traditionally, um, with society and, and it's good that we're now questioning those rules. Um, you know, everybody defined you by a salary and a paycheck and a title. So, and I say this in the book too, you know, you meet people, and people aren't going to ask you how, how, you know, they ask you how you're doing, but like, it's just like a, a quick intro. And then after that, it's, so. Oh, where do you work? Right, what do you do? Right. And so traditionally we're defined by these things. And so it's, it's taken on so much more significance than it really needs to. And I think that's why, you know, like even when we try, even when we try to redefine ourselves and even when we push back on that definition, it keeps coming back because and this is something I want to change. I want us to, you know, like collectively yes. as a society, I want us to focus more. And, you know, mental wellness is taking on um, more, more importance and, you know, and, and emotional health. But we really need to, um, you know, do more and, and do a better job of, of really defining and redefining, um, you know, how we see each other and, and, and what are the things that we really emphasize in our daily conversations? It's just like, you know, you get together on a weekend and everybody's talking about work. Um, yeah. things like that just kind of put us back in that box. And so I think if we start to have the conversation, then that's a good thing. Cause then we're redefining it as we go along and we're changing our conversation, um, we're changing our discussions about what's important, what's really important. I would love to tie this together with like a little bit of a bow. So we talked about this being just such a great time to kickstart these changes in our mindset around money and really begin to bring in the concept of holistic wealth. If you could give somebody like one, maybe even baby little action step of something they can do today to help them to start thinking about their money in a holistic way. What oh, would you wow. That's a great question. Like I would just say, start, start <laughs> with the mindset, you know, and in the book, and you mentioned it in the book, I, I talk about the holistic wealth um, method and it's, it's really a mindset um, you know, of looking at, and in terms of when we even look at our money, let's say, looking at things that either add or deplete that holistic wealth bank account um, and making our decisions from there. Because I think if we do that, then we're really on a path toward achieving holistic wealth because everything is tied in. And so if we think about things that deplete our holistic wealth bank account from a money perspective, it's spending on things that aren't going to get us to our end goal. It's, um, you know, going out to places that we don't need to be or, or, or spending on things that we don't need Mm -hmm. that will erode that bank account. And so I think starting with the mindset is key. And that holistic wealth mindset is a great starting point, especially for the new year, because then we're not thinking about our money in isolation. We're thinking about it with all these factors combined, because sometimes our spending you know, it goes off the rails because our emotional health is just not strong enough. Like we get tempted, you know, yeah. and then there are days when we feel sad and we're like, you know what, I think I deserve that pair of shoes or I think I deserve this. But um, but it, it, it doesn't necessarily, you know, like work that way. And so if we tie everything together and really address all these key aspects and, and really think about our mindset in a very deliberate way. You know, in the book, I talk about everything being intentionally designed and our lives being an intentional designed life. That's what I mean. Like everything has to be intentional. Yes. Everything has to be grounded in something. And so that's kind of how I would, you know, that would be my kind of advice for, for doing that. Financial anxiety, anyone? Yeah, you're not alone. But worrying about it, it doesn't help. Earnin does. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. You just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Then you can access up to $100 per day as you work and leave an additional tip. 
Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. So how would you spend the money you get from Earnin? Well, honestly, my hubby and I have been feeling a little bit disconnected lately. That's what happens after you've been together about 12 years. So I would spend the money on a special date night with dinner and maybe bowling, you know, to bring back some of that giggly excitement that we both felt at the beginning. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security, gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E-A-R-N-I-N, in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in Talkin, T-A-L-K-A-N, money under podcast when you sign up. It will really help the show. Talkin money under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash TOS for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank & Trust, member FDIC. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news, well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps but I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. It gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. <laughs> I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet. Finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. By the way, I'm going to say this with everybody who is on the podcast this month. If you don't have Keisha's book, Holistic Wealth, you've got to grab it. It's another staple to put aside next to Ken Honda's book. And anytime you're getting frantic about money, just read a few chapters. It will, it will change how you think about money and this concept of wealth for the rest of your life. And speaking of Ken Honda, who can forget him and his happy money message? He shared that he says that word arigato to his money every time he opens his wallet or pays for something or receives money. And I have to admit that I have borrowed this approach and I can't say that it's done anything revolutionary yet, but it just makes me feel really good. And maybe that's enough. Maybe that is putting me in a good mindset around my money. So you should try it. I'm, what's the worst that could happen? I wanted to start out, you know, you say that that money is energy. It can mm -hmm. be happy or it can be unhappy. So 
tell me a little bit, like, what makes money happy? You know, one time I was approached by this woman, and she um, asked me if she could take a look at my wallet. And she just scanned all my bills, and she said, Ken, you're good to go because all your money is smiling. And she told me that money can smile or laugh. And if, if you're not uh, doing what you love, or if you're taking advantage of other people, your money could be crying in your wallet. And I thought, wow, wow that's an interesting concept. And I started thinking, you know, there must be two kinds of money, happy money and unhappy money. And happy money makes you smile when you receive it and when you spend it. Whereas unhappy money makes you, uh, ooh, you know, frustrated and uh, when you receive the money. And also when you spend money, it gives me scary feeling too. So uh, it's a diff- uh, big difference. And it doesn't really matter how much money make you make or you, you have. It's about your uh, emotional attitude toward money. Uh, yeah, I think that's so powerful. And I always say we don't spend enough time talking about, like you said, the emotional attitude towards money. We want to go straight mm-hmm. on to the how-tos. How do I grow my investments or how do I right. budget? Or, and all of those things are really important. Mm-hmm. But the emotional component of it, I have found to be a game changer for myself and for countless other people that I've, I've shared this message to. But I'm curious, like, why do we ignore this emotional component of money? You know, I think uh, we're so hooked up with the numbers. So yeah. uh, the more is better. And I talk about money container um, in general. I teach Japanese, uh, hundreds of thousands of Japanese people how to um, find your right size. But in, for example, in North America, I get many questions like, how can I big, uh, how can I make my money container bigger? So, uh, there's an assumption that more is better. But in fact, uh, I approach, uh, differently. It's like more Zen way. So, um, can you satisfy with what you have? Because, uh, happiness is found when you are fully content with what you have. So don't try to go for bigger, better, you know, more. Otherwise, um, your life will be in the hell of endlessly wanting more. Wow. Yeah, that's so powerful. I, I, tell me a little bit more about this, like finding the right size container. How mm-hmm. do you how do you practically go about that and, and yeah. figure out what that yeah. is for you? Yes. You know, my father was a very successful accountant, tax accountant, and he taught me everything about money. And then I, as I grew up, I found out that um, we had guests on weekends for my father uh, to, to visit his clients. And I realized when I was small, um, there are people who brought very expensive, you know, uh, sweets and nice things for a souvenir. And there are those that who didn't bring anything, you know, to our house. So <laughs> I, you know, I realized that there are two kinds of people, generous people and not so generous people. And I found out that there are people who are good at making money, receiving money, and who are not so good at making money. So I found out that there is this thing called money container. We're born with a a certain money container. It could be a small size. It could be a big size. Somebody like Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, they were born with a big, huge money container. And uh, there are those who are making a minimum wage. They don't think... Um, outside of the box. So those people uh, were born with smaller uh, bucket of uh, money container. Hmm, interesting. So can you, uh, y- you know, s- using those examples, saying those people are born into those money containers, mm-hmm. can you then change your money container? Of course, of course. But, you know, um, uh, it's so interesting because it's, um, as you talk about, Sean, it's, uh, it's about a mindset. You know, when, when we think that we're so limited, you know, we're just, uh, if we are limited to, for example, employee mentality, we tend to think how much money we get per hour or per week or per month. But uh, wealthy people think of money in terms of um, rendering service to millions of people and then uh, receive money. So um, right. they tend to think more about entrepreneur mind. So, uh, and in fact, the, the more service and the better service and the happier service they provide, uh, they're likely to receive more. So that's um, how life works in this um, uh, capitalism. But, you know, um, when you just take a look at your life, 
um, how much a service you give out, uh, you receive later on. So it's, it's the money container, but at the same time, it's how much you're willing to offer to the world. So if you're offering little, uh, working minimum wage, uh, kind of work, you're not uh, giving so much service. But if you're just providing so much information, so much love, and for example, if you own a restaurant chain, you are serving hundreds of thousands of people every day uh, through your company. So uh, right. the more service you provide, the more you receive. And it's a very simple fact. Yes, it's such a powerful thing to think about. Uh, I'd love for you to share also, I know you, you share the story of um, saying arigato to mm-hmm. your money. Mm-hmm. I would love for you to share that. Thank you for asking. Uh, I had a great privilege of meeting so many great mentors, teachers, and one of them is Wahe Takeda, who, who used to be, who uh, used to be called Warren Buffett of Japan. He passed away a few years ago. And, uh, he, when I had a chance to meet him, you know, like you, you have an opportunity to meet Warren Buffett. What would you ask? And I asked him, yeah. what is the secret of money? How can I be wealthy? And he said only one thing. Oh, actually two things. And he said, uh, when money comes in, say arigato. When money leaves you, that means when you spend money, also arigato. Arigato in, arigato out. Uh, and I asked him, uh, anything else? And I said, that's it. <laughs> arigato in, <laughs> arigato out. And I was like, oh my God, I came all the way to see him and then I should yeah. know something else. But I, I started doing it. It's almost like 10 some years ago. And, um, a lot of interesting things started happening in my life. Once I started saying arigato in, arigato out, I felt happier, you know. And, really? Uh, yes, because uh, when I received money, I said, oh, thank you. And uh, around the time, I went to a supermarket and I got a $2 coupon at the cash register, you know, somehow. Uh, yeah. I, mean, I think everybody has it, gets it, right? And then, wow, I, I just said it out loud uh, in, in Japanese. I'm, I'm a lucky guy. <laughs> and, and obviously, the woman next to me, uh, in front of me, uh, so it was amusing. So she, she handed out her $2 coupon to me and I said, wow, I'm double lucky. And then there's another woman who just g- gave me that. And so like I got like $6 instantly by showing arigato or thank you. And I show my happiness and it was so fun. Uh, so when you receive money, just show your appreciation. And, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's great for business too. So whenever you receive money from your clients and customers, just show appreciation. In, in, in terms of smile or emails or letters, it really works wonders. And when you spend money, also say thank you uh, because uh, you, you get some kind of service or, or merchandise when you spend money. So somebody gets something good for you to make you happy. So there's a, a lot of uh, reason to appreciate about. It. So once you start this appreciation, I think you start this cycle of appreciation and what you, whatever you appreciate, appreciates. And I, I, my income grew and I was a happier man and more money. I couldn't uh, complain more. And I started teaching about happy money to my clients and, uh, I got incredible results. For example, a single mother who used to work, uh, work for, uh, her, uh, CEO, she was complaining about the low payment. Uh, and then, uh, she started um, thanking her boss because she's a, a high, high school wow. graduate and she didn't get a college degree, but um, she got a job. So a few weeks later, she got a big raise from her boss who she called him a stingy guy. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> wow. That's, that's so amazing. So like even just that practice of saying arigato is like showing the appreciation. Mm-hmm. It, it does something to your to your brain, to mm-hmm. your insides, right? Yes. Like it, it changes your perspective in a way that it's yes. hard to explain unless you've you've done it yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, what it works is that um, once you focus on appreciation, what he said, a human mind cannot uh, conceive one thing, you know, uh, two things at one time. So if you are thanking something, you cannot worry about it. So um, in other words, if you appreciate money, you cannot. Uh, worry about money at the same time. It's taken me about 
four years, maybe longer to master my mindset. If I'm going to be transparent, it wasn't certainly this overnight thing because you're pushing against some of those deeply held beliefs about money that it feels like you were just born with, or certainly it's felt like that in my case. I don't know. Some of the things I can't pull all the way apart. Why do I think this way? I'm like, I don't know. It just sort of feels like I just came that way. And another thing about mastering your mindset, it is literally one of the best ways to avoid fights with your partner too, because when you understand how you think about money and you've done some work to figure out what works, what doesn't work, you're able to cultivate that better in a relationship and come to your relationship with a different approach around money. So for me, the process of mastering my mindset really started with journaling every day where I'd set this goal, I'd set action steps, and then I'd check on what was going on in my mind. So how I was feeling, where I was stuck, some of the money mistakes that would keep coming up, like anything that was just fresh and flowing in my brain, I would write down every single day. And this got me focused and really forced me to articulate what I was feeling about money. So once you have that awareness point, then that's the place where you can change anything. So then we heard from, remember Michaela Renee Johnson and her story about turning these stumbling blocks into stepping stones? I think her message is really impactful to hear probably over and over and over again, because even when you quote unquote master your money mindset, something is going to come along that you weren't expecting. And it happens to all of us, but it's really how you handle the stumbling blocks that that matters. Whether you call it a stumbling block or a crisis, whatever word that might be for you, those moments matter because it's the place that many people freak out and turn to drastic money choices that could have a really long lasting impact, like expensive debt or whatever that may, may be in your situation. So really understanding how to turn those stumbling blocks into something that is going to propel you forward is one of the smartest money moves you can you can really make. I'm Samantha Cole, host of the new season of Understood, The Pornhub Empire. Over the course of four episodes, I'll tell you how a horny YouTube knockoff in Canada came to dominate the porn world, only to shatter their cheeky reputation in a massive scandal. The Pornhub Empire is a new season of Understood from the CBC. Available now wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, I'm Karina Bemisterfer, host of Morning Cup of Murder, your daily true crime podcast. Yes, you heard me right. Daily true crime. Every day, Morning Cup of Murder tells you a straightforward, short form story about murder, true crime, cold cases, disappearances, serial killers, cults, and more. And I do that all in under 15 minutes. With over three years of stories and over 20 million downloads, the Morning Cup of Murder podcast has become a staple of so many people's daily routines. So why not add it to yours? Stream Morning Cup of Murder everywhere you listen to podcasts. And remember, stay safe. From Foreign Policy, I'm Rena Nainen, the host of The Hidden Economics of Remarkable Women. Over the past few years, we've looked at how women around the world are changing societal norms to increase their economic power. This season, we're focusing completely on girls, how they're pushing for a brighter, more powerful future, and what the rest of us can do to set them up for success. Join us for stories about girl power, young women who are fighting for change, to give themselves a chance to live a life of their own choosing. That's season six of The Hidden Economics of Remarkable Women, wherever you get your podcasts. Your story is so powerful, and I I really want to dive into it. You say that how we view life's inevitable setbacks really has this profound effect over our well-being, and I, I so agree. Is there a way to find happiness in any situation? I believe that we have to. I think that's really what it comes down to. Otherwise, we end up succumbing to things like anxiety and depression. Inevitably, we're going to experience those emotions. But how we look at the experiences that we have in life is what sets us up for the future. And um, I, I also believe that within every sad 
weakness or pain, there is some light and hope. And so I think that's the goal is to, is to find, to find the positive message in whatever it is that we're going through at the time. I like that you say that. And I know you have this, this incredible story that I want to get into. And, and you talk about that lightness and hope. And I know that sometimes when I'm in a tough situation, it's hard to find that in the moment. In retrospect, it's like, oh, yeah, of course, that that's why it happened. Uh, are, are there any practical ways to like find that in the moment? Well, that's the thing is I think that anytime we're in the throes and there's different levels, right? I mean, you know, in my practice, I see people that are, that are going through all different kinds of things in life. So I see people who, you know, are maybe be going through a separation or are having a tough time in their job to the mother that just lost a child. So I think there's different levels of these, um, these experiences and these pains that we experience as we go through our lifetime. Um, and I believe that in, in each of our journey, these things are there to help us grow. And, and I am a firm believer that I don't think we get handed anything more than we can handle. So, um, so, you know, in this lifetime, we have these different experiences and it's, um, it sometimes feels maybe impossible, like the weight of a million boulders. Um, and it's not until much later that we can reflect and, and find that positivity. But I think it can help if in the moment, um, we take time for gratitude for the things that are going right or the things that, that we are appreciative of. And, and that can work in the um, most intense of pain and trauma to the lightest of pain and trauma. I like gratitude. It's something I've really tried to focus on this year. And I, I could tell you, even in, in tough situations, gratitude really, it like brings you back to this place. And I can't quite describe what that is, but it's, it's this place of awareness of, okay, I've, I've got a lot of great things that have happened or that are happening. And this other thing that's not so good, maybe it's not that big of a deal, or maybe I don't need to give it that much attention. And I think, gratitude is just so important. As, and sometimes we just want to be angry or we just want to stew in <laughs> yes. it for a minute. <laughs> and I think that's okay too. It's like, you know what? It's uh 10 Oh nine. And I'm going to give myself until 10 15 to just be a grumpy butt about it. <laughs> and that's okay too. But then at 10 15, I'm going to start trying to find something that brings me a little bit more positivity and, and lightness in, in the way I'm feeling because, um, it's up to us if we want to sit with that and, and ultimately, you know, not forgiving people or, or not moving past things, the only person these ultimately hurt is ourselves. I like that. I like the the time factor. I'm giving myself X amount of time that I can feel however I want to feel. And then I got to pick myself up, dust off and, and let's go forward. I like that advice. Exactly. <laughs> Will you... You have this story. You were 12 years old and there was this financial slump that happened. You say forced your family to move from a relatively upscale area into a trailer with no electricity, no running water. Walk me through a little bit because that feels very like that would be very traumatic, especially for somebody 12 years old. What was that time like for you? I think that it was definitely a lot harder for me than it was for my two younger brothers. Um, for them, you know, they saw it as like, oh, this is a fun camping adventure in the woods that just kind of never ends, yeah. like Swiss Family Robinson style. Right. Um, where for me, being, you know, a uh, tween, I was super hyper aware of the loss that I was experiencing, the loss of friendships, the loss of routines that I knew, um, the loss financially of being able to, um, go and pick out school clothes or, you know, get things that were popular or trendy at that time. And, um, really even just my existing stuff. So we, we packed everything up and it went into a storage unit, everything that was not absolutely necessary. And, um, because we only had a 27 foot fifth wheel. So there was very limited space to bring anything with us. And so I think what I mostly felt at that time was this great sense of loss. And I think people experience losses throughout their lifetime in all sorts of different ways. And they, they, they look different, but, um, the feelings, uh, deep down inside tend to have the same impact on our, um, emotional well-being. Well, I'm asking everyone that I, that I talked to this month to help us walk through what it means to have a healthy mindset and 
truly find this this idea of balance in life. So I'm curious, what do we need to keep top of mind in our in our pursuit of happiness, no matter what the setbacks are or what the situation? Man, that is such a great question. Um, and as you were asking it, I was thinking about um, contentment or peace. And I think that when it comes to our bodies, our minds, anytime that we have little bits of, you know, twangs of pain here and there, like, uh, you know, a pulled muscle or just getting a headache, or maybe it's a belly ache or something like that. I think that's like a physical manifestation of our body saying something isn't balanced. And it's a really great opportunity to take some time to do some mindful, mindful meditation or mindful thoughts and sit somewhere, find a very peaceful environment and just kind of close your eyes and, and listen to what your body is actually telling you and listen to what comes to you. And for me, that that's, that's the fastest and best way that I reset when I'm, when I'm starting to feel those physical kind of, you know, ailments, I go, something's not balanced. I'm putting my energy in, in too much of this place or not enough of that place. And I need to just spend a little time, sit, reset, reconnect with my basic human functioning, which is, um, you know, in our old, our old caveman days, they used to spend a whole lot of time sitting and reflecting and listening and thinking. And that is when, you know, as humans, we've grown so much from allowing that time for our mind to develop and grow and experience. I mean, you know, Einstein's greatest developments came from spaces of near meditation when he was just sitting and thinking, you know, even Newton underneath the apple tree. (laughs) So I like to, I like to go back to that and, um, really tap into the fact that we're moving so fast all the time. And I just came back from international travel to Panama where I spent, um, three days in a remote village, um, in Bocas del Toro where they don't have power. They don't have, you know, they're living very, very simply. And so many of them were just sitting on the porch and they, their homes are very, very basic. Um, and they were just sitting there just looking out over the pastures. And, um, and that's just, the most basic human right that we have is to connect with the earth that we're on. And I think it's really important to, to slow down and go back to that space when, when we get kind of hectic or crazy or things feel unbalanced. I'm not just going to leave you hanging to in January. I'm really going to try to continue to bring you stories of mindset and wellness throughout this year, because honestly, not that many people are talking about this in terms of money. And I have seen this concept be the number one reason that people have been able to make massive changes in their money over the last 15 years. It's not just one person or one situation. I have seen it over and over and over again, regardless of income, education, age, you name it. People who were stuck wanting to pay off debt or improve their credit scores or buy a house or afford adoptions when they were able to change their mind around money and really think of things that were keeping them stuck, like have this awareness, suddenly things started to change. And I will say it does start with figuring out what you're spending your money on every single month. No more of that. I'm just spending my money. Money comes in, money goes out. I don't really need to look at my bank account or my budgeting app. It's no big deal. It is such a big deal. It is really really the number one factor to change things for you. So you see, it's it's easy for our brains to stay comfy. And comfy oftentimes equals a lack of action, which means we stay stuck. So to change your money situation, you've got to do just that, make a change. And I beg you that it starts with this idea of money mindset. Take five minutes after this episode and write down how you feel about money. Ways your mindset might be keeping you stuck and then create an action plan to unstick yourself. If I can do it, you can do it. So thanks so much for hanging out with me this month and listening in on this mashup episode. On this podcast, we have a powerful thing that we're trying to do. We are changing our language around money to help others unlock the lives they want to live so you can live it out on purpose. Now that you are a part of that movement, it's up to all of us to invite others in. So share this episode with someone that you think is really ready to make life changes and wants to embrace this idea of money mindset. 
tell them why they should be listening and invite them in so we can all talk about money in a new, fun, and fresh way. Everyone knows that putting money aside in savings is really important. But then what? Should you keep your savings locked in a CD for a higher rate or keep them liquid in a money market? Can your checking account help you save too? Or is it about creating the right combination? We believe real banking is a conversation. Let's talk about the savings options that are right for you. Learn more at sandyspringbank.com. Member FDIC. Member FDIC.